Um, so I'm going to begin by asking, I mean, obviously, you know, you were brilliant in, in Ben Wheatley's A Field in England as well, which is one of his his best and in the earth is, is, is another in the kind of similar vein, sort of two of his most creative pieces yet. You must have been so thrilled when you got that kind of call from him with the chance to, to collaborate with him again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was April last year in the middle of the lockdown. And I think I texted him saying, what, this is all very strange, isn't it? What are you doing? And he said, I'm writing a horror film. And I was like, oh, right, if there's a, if there's a little part in it for me ever. And he was like, well, there is. And I was like, oh. So that was exciting. And I thought, uh, but I didn't really think it was going to happen. I thought he was, he was just film writing for his own sanity, you know, in the lockdown. And then in May, June, July, the dates were being fixed. And it was, it seemed as we approached it, that we were really going to do it. And um, by the time August came, we were out in Henley filming it. And it was a, a real uh, ray of hope. It felt like we were, it, it, having not filmed anything or done anything, we were a little band of 25 people that went out into the woods and filmed this thing sort of off grid. So it was thrilling to do it. And you've always struck me um, alongside uh, Steve Pemberton as being comedically, how do, I, how do I put this, on a level above most. <laughs> Sounds like a bit like I'm gushing, but you guys have always just taken risks and try and try things that so many other comics in this country don't really do. It's been one of those rare filmmakers who offers you work, stuff you've not had to write yourself that matches your own ambition and sort of challenges you. Yes, I think that is absolutely true. Yeah. And, and he, he is like minded in the way that he'll present a project and he'll have ideas for things and I think Ben's films really capture something that it's hard to capture in on tv or film where you get that real sense of of real violence in, in a way that you you never see it done in as it would really be and I think he manages to do that and I think we try in our things to just always surprise and, and elevate and make you think, wow, I didn't like that, but it's very sure of itself. And, and, and just never waste the opportunity of telling a story in, in an interesting way, because there's so much content now, you know, that it's very hard to bat an eyelid. And we really try to, and we've never lost sight of, uh, we never took it for granted that we have the opportunity to tell these stories, especially with number nine, this anthology and changes week upon week. But Ben is a great example of, of um, and someone that writes fantastic scripts and I don't have to have written them and I can just be in it as an actor. It's the most, it's the best thing in the world to just go in, do the best I can do. And it's his problem because you feel in a very safe pair of hands because he's an editor as well and he gets it and he's got it all in his head. I might have a lot of is it is it do you reckon there's a sort of charm to Zach's lifestyle of course Zach's personality sort of <laughs> brings up a few questionable things but that kind of notion of just completely going off grid and getting away from it or you, could you see the appeal to that at all oh yeah absolutely yeah I, I think it is appealing it's got that strange sort of um su there is a seduction in it the idea that you can be uh it sort of frees you up to not have responsibility doesn't it it's like I'm not part of that anymore and I'm just living hand to mouth here with at one with nature and Zach's very much constructed a reality for himself where he's that narrative that he's told himself however mad it might be when confronted by people that have are not party to it he's very happy in that world and he's sort of sorted it all out I think one of the explorations of the film is about how the human animal has to have tell itself stories and create ideas behind why things are happening and Zach has done that in spades. <laughs> I mean, you've played such a myriad of strange, brilliant, unhinged people. Uh, doing, and do, do you think doing what you do and playing roles a bit like Zach, among others, gives you quite a kind of well-informed take on humanity? I mean, I guess you could. that's kind of true of all actors, but you play such a wide variety of different types of people. It must give you quite a, a strong sense of our nuances and sensibilities as a, as a race. Well, yes. I mean, we certainly try to explore that in all our um, incarnations and, and um, playing characters with various needs and wants and um, obsessions is is a very cathartic thing I think I think we have remained quite normal in real life because the madness has been in our work you know and it does give you opportunities to explore extremes and uh, and subtleties you know I enjoy playing Zach in a, in a way that you might not initially think he could have gone it was one of the uh, most chilling things about him, I think, is his calmness and uh, his assuredness and the plausibility that he has and, and the conviction, because it's like it's unwavering. And I think that's what's quite scary about being confronted with someone like him. It's like, I'm not going to be able to persuade him any other way. 
Yeah, because yeah. I, I mean, you obviously you've got such a rich history in comedy, but you've always blurred the line between genres seamlessly. And there have been sev several horror tropes in your work across the years. Do you think comedy and horror go hand in hand? Do they rely on the same sensibilities, you know, the timing, the way they build up to a gag or, or a scare? Yeah, exactly that. I think that's exactly right. What you've just said, it's it, um, the the sensibility of a horror film. You know, you go see a horror film, you just listen to the audience. It would be there'd be absolute pinpoint silence and then when the scare comes there would be a big laugh in the audience and it's like telling a joke and the mechanics are very much the same and if you get it right it's nothing more thrilling I've spent a career trying to sort of navigate that delicious spot where you can do both and when you do get it right it's it, it's fantastic and you know there are moments in this that are very I can't wait to see with an audience because I'm sure there'll be lots of laughs and then lots of jump scares as well but that there was a the bit where I'm trying to help Martin with his foot that was very much constructed like almost like telling a joke you know that the beats of that and then the relief of it is was uh, all very carefully thought out I think so yeah you are playing in all that and I think Ben knows that that's why he has so many great comedic actors in his films as well so my, my final question, I just wanted to ask you while I have you about Bernie Clifton's dressing room, because I honestly think that is the best 30 minutes of telly in like the last 10, 15 years. You, I mean, you guys have done so many wonderful Inside Number 9 episodes, but because they're all different to the other, is, is there ever one you stumble across or everyone you write where you just kind of know and there's an awareness that you think this one, this is a special one? Do, do you feel it too? No, no, we don't. I mean, we thought Bernie Clifton... Uh, was a good one we just thought and it only came about because we wanted to do a two-hander with me and steve we'd never done one where it was just us two essentially and so we thought let's do a double act that are meeting together and we wrote it we thought it was quite sweet and then then weirdly it people go mad for it you know and it's i think it maybe it's the moving ones that are the ones that are really that stay with people yeah and you know not necessarily the outright funny ones but you're never sure what's going to land we, we we love them all but it's great when one suddenly hits, you know. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Well, thank you so much for thank your time. You. It's been a real pleasure speaking to you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!